going on guys it's your boy Cecil here bring us a video here today bring you guys a Photoshop tutorial create your own cool illustrated 3d text banner design I wrote it down this time um so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video honestly of course the text actually here is actually inspired by Aaron and Jesper I want to make sure that's out there and clear I just wanted to give my own shot at making a 3d text in Photoshop because currently I know I know a lot of you guys homies keep asking me for the whole 3d text tutorials or 3d videos period but I'm just like kind of I'm not over to 4d there's just so much that I need to like I had to have some sort of motion or some sort of just something to happen for Cinema 4D for me to actually get in there and like do something in Photoshop afterwards. But I just want to give it a shot. Honestly, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool little concept. I use, of course, the game Fortnite. I think it's very popular. And it's also, you know, comes on. So, you know, we got to do the little uh, clickbait. Um, uh, yeah. So I don't play the game at all. Honestly, I play PUBG, dude. Oh, don't hurt me. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed your year. Honestly, I am a little tired in this video. I'm still tired. I don't know if I just said that. That's how tired I am. <laughs> um, I just, I just want to say thank you guys very, very much for a great 2017. That's in the past. That's in the past, dude. This is the first video of 2018, as you can see. I'm trying a little. Well, this, it should be this video. It should be this, like right here. Um, I'm trying a little bit, right? I'm trying to, I'm gonna try not to like, just bring more into it. Bring something fresh. Bring something new. And I also might be actually posting a lot more like we'll see we'll see i'm not gonna say it because i'm just i just know i want to just do other videos that i know that i just want to do but i've always had that motion or sort of that notion in my head that if i just did something and i didn't get that many views it's not good and that's just not it some people are just not like custom to it because my channel is such you know tutorial based tutorial based tutorial based but hopefully you guys enjoy the next videos or excuse me videos for the year um hopefully you guys enjoy the videos that i put out for season 18 hope you guys did enjoy the other videos as well but we're gonna just bring more and also try to bring out two different angles for the camera so i don't know how that's gonna work but you guys have to let me know so much love guys i'll tell you guys in the video itself thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for a very great year and hopefully for another good one and uh much love talk to you guys in a second peace all right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the text here. The font that I'm using for today's video, what is it called? It's called Burbank Big Concentrate. I looked up like what the Fortnite font was. I guess this is the closest, the most original to it. So I'm going to be using this font for here, uh, today's video here today. So let's go ahead and just jump right into this, right? So let's just go hide this design. Um, let's put some rules in really quickly just so I know where exactly they are, or at least where to put the, the text somewhat, right? All right, cool. Let's just hide this, right? I can just put it back if I want to. And we're just going to go ahead and just throw in the word. What do we have last time? Gaming. All right. Let's go ahead and just type the word gaming in. We're going to make this white. We're going to make this. How big are we going to make it? Like, let's just go all the way up for 72. How big was this one, actually? Let's see. What's the difference here? We'll make it a little bit bigger. Oh, I think I know why it's a little bit bigger. Okay, so once I have my text here, the thing about this here is you want to make sure you have your spelling correct. You want to make sure you have everything correct because what's going to happen now is once you make your text, once you've made sure it's all corrected and stuff like that, and the spelling wise, your font choices, you're going to want to have to rasterize this layer. So rasterize the type. It's going to make your layer turn into something that you can actually draw on, you can erase on, and you can actually use the perspective tool which we're going to be using when we press Control T to free transform. But when you right click, you also have besides the free transform option is perspective distort skew warp all those other things I'm gonna be using the perspective one so I'm gonna click on perspective I'm gonna click on the top right notch here and I'm gonna go ahead and just click and just move it backwards or wait I guess the way I'm moving it backwards is taking my mouse and just dragging it down right we're gonna drag this down and we're gonna take this side over here and then drag a mouse up a little bit right and we're gonna take this point uh, bottom right and then drag my mouse to the right a little bit to bring that out that way and there you guys go. As you see, we got to get this really cool little angle here. That's just better and more like kind of fun to work with besides a very old, you know, kind of tacky little like front facing like text and whatnot, right? It's not tacky, but I mean, it's just a little more fun. So I'm going to go ahead and just start off with this thing. Now, I believe the hex codes that I have up here, right? I believe the yellow I used is this color. So I'm going to change this to the yellow I used at first. Boom. All right. And I'm going to rash the layer so I get rid of that gaming thing or this is the uh, color overlay. And the first thing I'm going to do is basically make a duplicate, right? So we're going to make a duplicate of this word gaming here. Press control J on your keyboard if you want to. If you also want to, you can press alt or excuse me, hold alt on your keyboard and then drag your mouse down to make another duplicate if you guys want to do that. Otherwise, what we're going to be doing is just control J. Very simple. Take the one on the bottom, right? You can even move this to the bottom if you guys want to. Take whatever one, move it to the bottom or whatever, and then just drag it down a little bit, right? Now, to make sure you can see this the way it should be seen is you want to press Control U on your keyboard. Just really quickly, very simple. You want to go to your lightness and then lower this down to, I guess, like a pretty good, like, maybe like that. All right, I think something like that. Just a little more darker, maybe a little more. Something like that. And we're going to move this right a little bit. We're just going to try to find a nice angle where everything looks pretty cool as is. 
right and i think kind of like right here is where i'm gonna have it so i just simply just drag it down to the right over a little bit and i kind of found this nice little like perspective on how i kind of want to start doing this stuff right so the, I guess the second part is is once you do this little duplicating on the actual bottom of this thing is you have to take a new layer use the pen tool and you can just use a pen tool and then these things like right here you see how this little gap here is like awkward doesn't look very connected it doesn't look like it's full so what you're gonna do is you have to take your pen tool zoom in probably like right where the pixel ends right go around it connect it right click fill the layer in and then choose the color that you chose as before like when we lowered the lightness down so you just choose that color press ok press ok again and if i just just jumped out of this really quickly you'll see that it looks way more full right there now right here as well we gotta do it <clears throat> All right, jump around and fill that in just like so now the g itself now finally looks complete and almost looks like a 3d text that's what we're looking for that's what we're just going to strive for so you're going to do this for every single layer yes it's lytic not tedious i wouldn't say it's too tedious it's not that crazy um it's just like of course you just have to do that to get that nice cool effect um i'm going to personally just move that up like that We'll go out to here. You have to fill it up every like every single time. You can also just make a new like uh, path. Besides, just when you close a path, you can press Control, click outside, and you'll be able to make a completely new path just like so. Right? We're gonna do that right now. Let's just go here, here, here. Right? Connect that. That's another path. Close that one down. Now, what I also might do is kind of make this look a little more thicker for this part here. Right? Kind of connect this there. Put that down there. Then go around again now i might get a little complicated with you guys like looking at it so i'm just going to uh, complete this one really quickly but you can see what i just basically did was i made three separate paths right click fill the path in press ok just like so now we have a nice full looking a and i can do the same thing for the inside of the a here as well kind of make this look a little more better kind of have that pop out just a little bit more uh boom like so delete the path right now that kind of looks like like a like a lot better like more thick a lot more like it had a purpose and it looked like an actual like an actually 3d right so i'm gonna go ahead and just really quickly just kind of speed art this part so i'm gonna be right back and i'm just gonna speed art this little this little this little section here because this is kind of tedious right i don't want to waste all your guys' time but you guys got the point um All right, that kind of concludes it right there. So I basically just kind of filled everything in so you can see this right here is what it looked like before. You can see it looks very like almost, it looks 3D, right? It has that 3D feature to it. However, it's not completely just done because it's not fixed. It's not refined. It's not rendered out kind of technically, right? And I just want to kind of pull that in. You'll see it, it kind of looks way more full. looks a lot more better. And we got actually space to work with and looks pretty good. Now these little things here, that's okay. It's just whatever for now. But you want to make sure you get it as perfect as possible. And for me, this is pretty much as good as it's going to get for right now. And the next part I'm going to do really quickly is is now I'm gonna just quickly group these two things together. This is basically the backdrop too. I'm gonna call it backdrop. Backdrop 3D, why not? And I'm gonna go ahead and just make a new layer, right click, and then create a clip mask and take my brush, simply right. And we're gonna take my brush, we're gonna use a nice, very simple, just dark color. I'm gonna use the hex code 1C1A18. Press OK. And with this here, since we have this layer up top, right, this is our top layer, then we have this group here, which is our bottom layer. If we have this clip mask to the bottom layer only, when we do things like this, like shadows, it's gonna look really really cool right so i'm gonna go in here just take my shadows right we're gonna have a shadow down here like just i don't know exactly like personally i'm just kind of looking at it as like a 3d image right like how would you have like see like a cinema 4d and you had like you know all that depth and stuff on like for the render it's kind of how i want to have it there so that looks pretty good right there i'll do something like right here as well i'm trying to make it a little smaller so i'm gonna get up here I'll, maybe i'll do up here first all right something like that right now i'm not the best at this right it's like my first try trying to do all this kind of stuff here oh my, i guess my second technically but you gotta see what's going on here i don't want it to look like it's popping off right i don't want it to look like it's a drop shadow i want it to look like it's a shadow itself and that can all I can, that can also be seen for a reason being that i don't actually have my little subsections filled like something like right here would be like like another subsection right for the actual logo itself also this angle is a little weird here but i would fix all this stuff feels for like a client something like that but for the tutorial purposes just know that these little angles here right this is a little off right it's a little off in the angle so i'll probably fix that but we're gonna do the other part in a second for right now though i think the the shadow on the a is like okay for now but it could be 10 times better right we'll just do it like that for now 
a little something right there. Then for the M here, right? I'm gonna put one like right here. There we go. And then for the N, I'm just making sure I get it on the insides because really the insides themselves are pretty much what's gonna be really dark at because it doesn't have much face exposure. Um, we're gonna do something like this. Uh huh. I need to take my eraser. Kind of fix that a little bit. We're looking a little bit better. We're looking good. We're looking okay. And then for the G again, like up here, like down here, and then a little bit like right here. Now, if you find yourself saying the shadow itself is too dark, I'm saying that to myself right now is a little bit. I can take my lightness and just throw it up a little bit. Make sure my, uh, I can't probably do that, unfortunately. I have to just go over here, color overlay. Choose a little bit better of a color to use. Like, let's just say, Maybe like this, so it's not so dark. Right, okay, press okay again. Right, it's not bad like that. That'll be okay for now, but as you can see, the difference between point A, which would be basically just having it as a regular old text, oops, excuse me. This right here has a regular old text, and then we just throw in the backdrop plus the little shadows we have, and we make it into a 3D text almost. It looks pretty dang good, kind of cartoony, right? But that's the whole point. So uh, if you find yourself saying to yourself, why does it just not look that much more complete? And like I said before, it's because of the subpass, right? I'm going to call them subpass. I don't know what you would call them originally in like a 3D program, but... Or is like how poly was like that. Like poly, I don't really know. We're just gonna keep going though. We're gonna make a new layer, right? R right between the actual backdrop group and the uh, shadow group itself. Take our pen tool and then things like these, things like these angles right here, you'll find yourself going around here. we will find yourself like filling this in really quickly with like a nice, I guess a darker color like so, right? And I'm, I should do it on the actual point to point, like right here, excuse me, this right here point. To like this point here i know it's weird because the angles but if i did this right here as well point to point go around right click fill the sub path in we'll just like use a nice lower tone of a color right or just something different right a different color let's also connect this path fill that in with that little bit different color now that might be too light of course i'm going to just throw in my lightness and uh saturation excuse me and just slow my lightness down my hue and saturation is what i meant to say there we go. So something like that color I want to use. So let's just save that color for a second. Right? So just something like that. You can see how the A looks more complete. It looks like it has like an actual foot now. That's what we're gonna look like. That's basically what we're looking for. Something like this as well. So this right here, point to point. This right here is another point to another point right there. Right? You'll probably understand if you guys were into like I guess like how you would say Cinema 4D itself. You'll probably figure out like what kind of like where your feet would actually be. And I would pretty much really pay attention to this because it really will make the effect just look way much like way better. Uh, let's just go ahead and say that that is now. Nah, let's just do this. Why not? Right here should be another face, right? Or another side. I'm looking at it as like as sides as well, right? And there we go. Let's try that. Right click, let's fill all sub paths. Oops. Let's fill all the paths, just like so. Nice little shape there, so you can all get into nice little feet. I'm gonna throw on this again and lower this down again. Just, I should probably get everything else besides these over here. Cut that out. Still gonna clip mask it, and I just lower the lightness down because I already did it on that one. Um, right about here, and I can see this mess up right here. I didn't go all the way around. My fault. Fill that in with like a darker color, something like that. Right? That's perfect. So, basically, as you can see, we went from point A again, which would be the regular old simple face. We added in our drop shadow to give ourselves, or excuse me, our drop little, I guess, backdrop to the 3D text itself. That also didn't have it, like, completed before. Right, right here. We just added a very simple uh, backdrop. Then we added our little simple pen tools to kind of fill all the letters together. And then we went ahead and threw in our shadows, right? Very nice simple shadows or foots, I guess we would say, right? Your feet, I guess you would say. And then you have your nice little shadow. So basically, that's kind of like the whole point of the actual 3D text. But let me go ahead and just really quickly finalize it myself. So what I ended up doing was I duplicated this, uh, this gaming like face logo right here, right? The face of the actual 3D text. I went ahead and lowered my fill down all the way to zero. If you guys do not know what that does, if I just move this really quickly, you can see it does the same thing as opacity, right? And I'm gonna just lower my fill down again to zero. You can see it's basically lowering my opacity to zero percent, but the things that I put on the actual layer style itself for the layer will actually be able to be seen still, which is pretty cool because it actually doesn't interfere with the end of, like any of the text or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and get rid of this, duplicate this, 
lower the fill down very simply so i have a, i have one that's like right here but you can't see it right i'm gonna throw on layer style uh, i'm gonna put on a brightness and contrast or excuse me a uh, gradient map gradient overlay whatever you want to call it just a little bit of a gradient there just like so we're gonna have that nice little gradient and then i'm gonna put on a stroke right i'm gonna put on my stroke i'm gonna put it on position inner i'm gonna throw on a nice simple size of one i'm gonna take my color and make sure it doesn't pop too hard but i'm gonna make it a little more close to the original color so it looks almost like a sharpen right if i need a little more passing down i will just a little bit but there we go kind of have that nice little face to it. it looks just a little more better and just that little more cartoony in a way as well and if i just like quickly just get rid of that put it on you can see the little nice little gradient a nice little sharpness it adds with a nice little stroke there so that's basically the sort of like the text portion in a way but we still have to do the sort of like little back like plate to it right so i'm gonna do that really quickly what i ended up doing was i'm gonna take my gaming face Let's just take, let's just name one of these gaming face. So you guys know what the heck it is. And then this is the gaming face like gradient. Let's just take one of the gaming faces, throw it behind everything really quickly. I'm gonna group everything together here and just call this text. Right, so that's just all one thing. We have the gaming face here as well. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna throw on a stroke. I'm gonna throw on my size put it a lot more bigger. Put my position, put it up to the outside, press okay. And once I find a nice little like sort of uh, a good size to go from I'm gonna go ahead and just pen tool out the kind of like this right here like the outside as well but also kind of keep the reference of like little letters having its own little like kind of like little section right so that's why I use this actual stroke thing as like a little example so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer click my pen tool come over here for the G just like so we're gonna pencil this thing out <clears throat> But for me, since I my, like the, of course, the face of the text itself is like Fortnite, it's all very and nice and curvy and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take myself and sort of make sure I have some pointed lines here, right? So I'm just using as this, as a reference itself. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a random little backdrop, just so I can have my text pop out a little more. Uh, let's just just start using straight lines, kind of like right here. Besides having all these curves, kind of like trying to represent. This end here is pointing out right there, so I'm gonna move that a little bit, try to follow that angle right on the bottom of this sphere for this little uh, stroke here. And then we're just gonna sort of move this up a little bit, just like so. Boom. All right, cool. This again, nice little straight lines. I'm holding shift, by the way, if I wanna make super straight lines, right? Just like so, and then holding shift to make a straight line. I'll make this one here again, shift. Bring that down a little bit, why the heck not? Over here, and move this down a little bit, up there straight line and then connect so you can see i use my little backdrop as a stroke as a reference so i'm gonna do now right is i'm gonna take right click fill my path i use this color right here which hex code is 231f1a press ok press ok again delete the path have a nice little backdrop here now what i ended up doing was duplicating this little uh layer right here i'm gonna call this let's just call this mm, plate we're gonna make a duplicate of the plate right throw that behind it and i actually throw it in front of it make sure it's in front this is gonna be called plate gradient. On this plate here, lower our fill again to zero. Double click on this, throw on a nice gradient overlay. This time we're gonna change it, the blend mode from whatever it was. It should be on overlay, by the way, for the uh, actual face of this. But we're gonna put it on normal, put this opacity up, and we're gonna take this and have your first gradient color be gray, like a grayish tone. So I would say 4F, 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 4F for the first one. For the second one, you can basically use almost the same thing. I use 6F, 6X, uh, 6F. I'll move this up a little bit so it's a little bit different, like 717171. Press OK. And the last one should just be nice, pure white, right? And if it doesn't have to be pure white, just move it down a little bit so it just doesn't stand out way too much. Something like that, right? You can still see the nice three different tones of color. Press OK. Press OK again. And then again. And then what we're going to do here is I'm going to rasterize this layer face, right? That way we can actually cut things out without messing with the gradient itself. Now I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go to uh, select, excuse me. Let's select the face of this here by holding control and click on the thumbnail of this layer here. So if you guys don't know how to do that, it's just simply uh, cold control, click on the thumbnail of the plate gradient. Then you want to go to select, modify, contract, and we're going to contract it by 10 pixels, which gives us a pretty cool little border right here, right? All you have to do on your keyboard is press delete. I'm going to press control D to deselect and we have this right here. Now the last thing we're going to have to do is basically make another backdrop for the plate. So for the gradient uh, plate gradient, I'm going to drag this below here. I'm going to make a duplicate of it, drag it below everything, right? And we're going to make sure we select the thumbnail list again and we're going to fill all this in though. Actually, I'm going to just hold the magic wand tool, fill it all in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press control U my keyboard and make this all one color, simple black, right? And it has this little lines here. I don't want that either. 
I want to make sure it's completely black, but it's not being completely black because I have a stroke on. Uh, oh, come on. All right, fine. We'll just make a plate here. Just use the plate itself. We don't have to use the actual gradient plate. We'll just use the regular old plate. And we're going to call this the mm, drop plate. Sure. Naming things is not my greatest thing in the world. Control you to um, bring up the hue and saturation. Lower this brightness down, excuse me, our lightness down to a pretty solid little point right there. And then for this already, it kind of already has that kind of feel that's already kind of complete right here and over here. So I don't have to do anything crazy, but that's kind of basically the whole text part of this. Like last but not least, the last, last thing I would do is I would use control G to group everything together, right? I'm going to make a new layer group, uh, excuse me, on that new layer, I'm going to go to create clipping mask. Press B on my keyboard for the brush. It's like a nice little gray or whatever goldish tone or whatever you're using for your actual, um, your font, excuse me, your font color. And then I'm gonna use a nice zero hardness brush. And we're gonna just click a couple times, just like so. I'll put some on the inside right there, right there. And then change your blender from normal to linear dodge. Add, lower your opacity down. I'm gonna go back into this, right? I don't wanna put anything on the drop shadow there. I wanna make sure it's on the outside. So on the, uh, not on the outside, but on the inside. There we go, kind of have that nice little coloring there. Now as well, I'm gonna put a nice little pattern on the plate right here, which is that inner color. I'm gonna use that plate pattern just like so, press okay. As you can see, it has a nice little pattern on the inside as well, kind of brings out the text itself a little bit more. Now if you wanna change around things with that, or if you want, if you wanna even have like these really cool pattern overlays, you can go to sesohq.com, go to like the shop, or go to selfie.com slash sesohq and uh, get the pattern pack. Anyway, if you guys didn't know that, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of like lower this down a little bit. I want more skinnier lines. There we go. Press okay. All right, this looks pretty good. So last but not least, the only thing I did that was a little bit different was on the actual plate drop. I made a new layer, right? Clip masked it. Nice brush here. Use a pure black because that's already a pretty dark color. And we're just gonna go ahead in here, kind of give ourselves like a nice little, uh, a little more depth to that. And I would say that is pretty much it for the text overall, all done. And now we're gonna go ahead and just drop into the sort of like the background and we're gonna add the color correction so I can break it into like three parts. So it's very more simple or easier to follow. And I already know this freaking video is gonna be way too long, dude. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just see you guys in a second. Love you, kisses, love you. All right, homies, let's go ahead and just jump into the background portion of this here. Now, we're gonna go ahead and just use the stock filters I had in this banner design here. I had basically, right, the backdrop here was a wood little texture here and the little uh, render right here. And I think the last thing I used is like the Fortnite actual logo or Fortnite text itself in the back, like the background right here kind of erased around a little bit, right? But I have these stocks that I use in today's video right here. I have a nice little download for you guys. I gotta go check it out in the description down below. Uh, in the description down below, I gotta like, you know, kind of like the word is a little difficult for me. Um, we're going to take the wood texture, throw it in over here, just like so. I'm going to throw it behind everything, of course, and we're going to drop it to a nice little section right here. It's hitting the bottom, it's in the top, and we're going to take our alt key, right? Drag it over by holding shift as well. So alt and shift are both selected. Drag your mouse over to the left, kind of fill it in. It's a nice little seamless pattern, by the way. So you can just simply drag it over, drag it over, drag it over, and you'll find yourself in a nice little backdrop. It looks pretty good. And you can also throw on some, uh, let's just throw on a little bit of like lights here a little bit, right? Let's take our lights, let's throw on some lights. Let's say it likes, I mean like little lighting effects. So I'm a nice little gray, just one of the, select the, one of the grays on the actual background itself, the actual wood texture. You can hold alt literally and hover over your key while you're right clicking and then choose any color you want. And that's how you get the little color picker to pop up and uh, take your layer, put it on linear dodge add, lower the opacity down a little bit. But like, you know, one right there, right? And that looks pretty good, right? So very simply, that little lighting effect kind of brought everything into a nice little perspective that looks kind of nice and similar to we have the lighting effects inside the word gaming here as well, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna throw on, let's just throw on this little like character really quickly, which happens to be in here as well. Throw on this little character, right? Nice little PNG. I'm gonna put this right around here is where I had it before, I think, somewhere around here. Something like that. Right, and let me just quickly kind of go over where that's gonna be. Okay, let's move that a little bit more to like the left here. All right, let's put that a little bit bigger. There we go, put that a little further down. All right, nice little placement right there. All right, so the reason why I kind of like messed around with that a little bit as well is if I go back to my original design here, you can see that his arm is actually in front of the actual text and her arm is behind the actual text, which gives the text itself like a nice little dynamic feel to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly zoom into here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put this logo, excuse me, put this render duplicate it right above this here as well. Take my pen tool, get in here, right? Pencil this out. Something like that, I think it's pretty good. I can just cut around just like so, right? Cause all we're gonna be cutting out is this side right here and following up to right here. So that's pretty, pretty much all you gotta stop to. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click we're going to make selection, press OK, and we're going to right click with the marquee tool selected, right? So you can press M on your keyboard, right click, and it gives you the option to layer via copy. Very simply, you can get rid of this one copy date right there. Uh, I didn't go further up enough. I need to go a little bit further. So that's my mistake right there. I will just go ahead and fix that. What is this, by the way? Oh, that's that. All right, so I'm going to just put this above here. And it is. That was Alexa. Why aren't you getting on? I didn't mean to turn you on. All right, stop. Stop listening. You weird. Sorry, I don't know that. Dude, just stop listening. Okay, there we go. Um, just like so. There we go. That's a little better, right? Just like so. I kind of what I ended up having to do is go back into my original. Uh, so go back into my picture, put the opacity down a little bit so I can still see it above the actual text. And I wasn't going high enough. I went a little bit higher this time. So now what's going to happen is when I do right click with the selection, put this back to 100% opacity, and my keyword for the marquee tool, layer via copy, and then I can get rid of this now. And then you can have his arm right in front of the text like I wanted before. And there we go. Very simply, right? And it kind of gives it that really cool, nice dynamic feel to it as well, which looks pretty badass. Now, the next thing I'm gonna basically do is that little cool little box I have on the right hand side, which looks really cool. All that cool stuff, right? We're gonna just go ahead and throw that in. Right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna take, I think I took an ellipse tool, excuse me, an ellipse tool, right? I think I made a nice little circle, right? I held shift and all that stuff. Actually, I don't think I held shift. I kind of went with the angle of the G right here. So I'm gonna do that again. Let's make a nice little circle that kind of follows the angle of this G. And I think that's pretty accurate right there. So if I just move this around a little bit, you can see this line kind of here right here kind of resembles this line right here that's what i was looking for when i originally did this so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to press y on my keyboard excuse me w my keyboard for the rectangle marquee tool and i'm going to go go ahead i should probably like put the ellipse on that would be a little bit smarter let's put this fill on <clears throat> right because what we're going to be doing is we're going to take the ellipse tool we're going to go ahead and just use the rectangle marquee tool i'm going to ratchet this layer use the rectangle marquee tool right just select the right hand side of it I'm gonna go ahead and just hide that layer now, make a new layer, and I'm gonna fill this new layer in that I just made with a nice dark brown. Alt backspace is how I'm gonna basically fill, quick fill that in. I can get rid of that lips tool now, now, like now, 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 now. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna say is you can use the pen tool itself. If you guys wanna just use the pen tool, very simply go around the, the actual thing itself. But I did use an ellipse tool, so I'm gonna just, I wanted to use it, right? So, right click, delete that path. But that's what I did for that. Let's move this down a little bit. I can just kind of stretch this out if I want to, because I can. Control U to bring up the hue and saturation, <clears throat> right? We're gonna lower our lightness down just a little bit more. I feel like it's not too much dark of a, like, like a brown. Not dark enough of a brown. Is that good enough? I should probably make it a little less dark because I haven't put any of the brightness and contrasts on yet. So I'll just put it on like something like that. So this is the brown that I'm using. It's the hex code 3F2813, press okay. And we're gonna go ahead and simply Throw on a little pattern overlay here. Zoom in just a little bit, or make this a little more bigger. That looks pretty good right there, right? So if you guys saw in the original concept itself, I had this nice little lines there as well. Now what I'm gonna do as well is throw on a nice little lights, yellow brushes this time. Put one like right here, put one over here. Let's put another one like, me like over there, like over there. And we'll put on linear dodge add again, lower the opacity down. I might make it a little more orange, actually. There we go, that kind of works, right? I need to take my eraser, kind of get rid of that much, a little bit over there. And that's pretty much that right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put up my first brightness and contrast in here. So brightness and contrast, we're gonna throw our brightness and contrast, the first one to, or excuse me, the brightness to negative 20 and the contrast to 32. There we go. Right, so like our first little brightness and contrast right there, a little action getting in, you got nice little darker colors, and also the little lights that we're putting in are now getting a little more like sort of vibrant and starting to pop out a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go again into this. I'm gonna put a little more lights. I'll put some lights on the top of this right here. I'm gonna use that brown. Let's just put some lights here. Linear dodge add. <clears throat> 
Put some nice little simple lights around, right? Okay. And now, why the heck not? I actually haven't done this in a very long time. I'm going to put a nice little focus light, a nice little white brush focus light right on the top. I haven't done this in a very long time, but for some reason, I loved how it looked when I actually ended up doing it for this banner design here. So don't judge me on it, but I'm going to load the opacity pretty far down. So like 35%, I'll say 40%. So it's a nice little even number as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just throw on my color balance, which happens to be how I got a nice little blue tone to my actual background here with the clothes that I used before, right? So all the hex codes and stuff like that, they're still the same as that colors. However, I did use a color balance to actually change the things around. So the cyan to red was nine. The uh, magenta to green was, what was it? Two. And the yellow to blue was thir oops, 23, right? There we go. So nice little sort of like almost like a like a bluish tone that's going on here. It looks pretty good as well still. I'm gonna throw on another brightness and contrast. This time I'm gonna put it on 20 and then 13. And then we're gonna throw on a levels as well. And for this one, like it's, called, it's sort of like another way of using brightness and contrast, by the way. So if you want to use this, it's sort of like, sort of like mixing with your darks, right? All your shadows is on the left side here, excuse me, on the right side here. And then sort of like all the, the highlights and such are on the, excuse me, mix that up. Dude, the shadows are on the left side, okay? and the highlights are on the right side. That's kind of how I think about it, so that maybe kind of helps you a little bit more. However, it's very, very hard to, like, excuse me, it's very easy to mess things up. So, I'm gonna change my first one, right? I have my settings here. I had it on 12, and then I had my middle on 1.03, and then I had my right-hand side at 2, 4, 8, right? Very nice, very simple, kind of made everything more darker to kind of have my tones be pulled out a little bit more as well. And then now, for right now, I think we're pretty much done. All I gotta do is find out why my colors here are not very poppy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a nice little brightness and contrast. And we're gonna make sure we pop that stuff out. So just putting our brightness up a little bit, just like so. Mess around with our contrast as well. Now we have a little more vibrant text that looks like, way, way better. Also, we're gonna throw on this little cool little, uh, little light behind this brown little sort of object we got, right? So I'm gonna throw another layer right in here. Take a nice little yellow. Now I did use a brush, a soft brush, right? Very simply just have like a nice little yellow light coming out of here. Very cool. All right, there we go for that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush here. Now, at this very moment in time, I've been talking about how I'm gonna release the, the, the update to the brush pack, and uh, this is it. It's gonna be out. It should be out by this time this video is up. If it's not, it's definitely on the second, but check the description down below if it's there. Homies, then you should go probably purchase it if you don't have it already, but the update is out. Now, let's just look at this right here. I think it was this brush right here that I used. Yes, it definitely was. I'm gonna throw this above this really quickly so I can find like the nice little, uh, nice angle of it. I think that is pretty good, like right there, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press on the actual little right hand little shape that we had. We're gonna use the magic wand tool, W on your keyboard, right? Click on the left hand side, take your little shape that you used to use. If you guys wanna use the brush that I used before, right? Press delete on your keyboard, have a nice little cool little thing on this side, and then you can just hold alt and hold shift, drag it over to the right, and then you can take your soft brush eraser, erase the edges over there, and you can make another one over here, rotate it a little bit to kind of match the angle still. Take this eraser, erase it over there, and you have that kind of little thing like floating around. I don't know what I thought about. Actually, I think I thought about moving like the actual axe or like the actual stuff in Fortnite, like your little mining pickaxe or whatever. I just saw the motion, so I thought that would work a little bit as well. Um, I think my little uh, shades here are a little bit too thick, or excuse me, my uh, little lines here are a little too thick. However, that's besides the point, honestly. Um, basically, as you can see, we're pretty much done, right? I would say the last thing I'll probably try to do is kind of fix this a little bit more. I feel like my colors for the blue are not popping out as high as they could be. We might have just changed up a little color correction or something like that somewhere in the design. However, it still pretty much adds up to how I wanted to have it. So I'm gonna just throw in one more last uh, soft brush, like yellow, and just throw in some spots here to just make sure, just see if I can just make things pop out just a little more before I end the tutorial, right? Later dodge add, lower the opacity down a little bit, right? There we go, and then just throw on one more brightness and contrast. Let's see if we can just make that text and everything sort of pop. And I'm kind of getting it right here. And if I need to, I can select the thumbnail of the brightness and contrast himself. And then use a black brush so you basically erase things are like out. And I'll just erase some things that are over here. I just want to make sure that I have the focus on that text still. That looks pretty good. Honestly. And uh that'd be it. There's your sort of little fun 3D text 
gaming banner now, of course the more time you spend on it the more like accuracy you put, like put into like your actual text itself you'll find a very very dope and very cool really it's a super dope design i'm gonna put in the little uh banner design on the bottom like i did before right oops let's go ahead and just make this white it's okay shrink this down and make it a little more smaller put that like right there and make this a little more white uh yellow excuse me a little more vibrant there we go. Oh, and one thing I just noticed as well, the actual backdrop for this text here, where is this text group right here? Right here, I should put a, like put on a nice little drop shadow or I can just make a new layer below it, take a nice black brush and just throw on a nice little drop shadow, just like so. That way it just looks not just floating around. I don't wanna make it look too weird though. There we go, not bad, perfect. So. That's gonna be the sort of conclusion of the actual banner design here today. This is the first video of 2018, so hopefully there's way more just really cool little fun concepts like this. Now, I would definitely tell you guys, make sure you guys t like take your time on it. As you can see, my original is a little more better because, of course, this is not a rush tutorial, but it's sort of like, you know, just me trying to fly by all the things that I did in the actual tutorial or in the actual example. That way, kind of have that little, uh, kind of like that, I guess, the start to finish feel, right? So, you can see my original concept just a little more better, just more clean, a little more thought out. Just make sure you guys guys understand that, that should be what you're doing as well um so yeah just hopefully you guys enjoy the today's i mean to, to be honest still though it's a little it's really good honestly um so yeah much love guys i'm gonna dip out i am uh what time is it currently it's okay so it's like 10 o'clock i still got time to go somewhere if i want to go somewhere but i'm not going to go anywhere um but uh yeah hopefully you guys enjoy like the whole happy new year thing oh, I, dude please don't be one of those people that be like new year new me honestly guys i think i'm gonna be just, i feel like the only reason why people say that is because it's like a new like if you like think about it, it's like a perfectionist or someone who just does something every single day or just wants to do something every single day it's a great way to start like for your mental just kind of start on the first that's fine and just hopefully you guys just take your motivation take all that motivation just let it fly through the entire year don't let it be like your first week your first day make sure it's something you're going to want to do and it really just starts with just doing it honestly the whole like just do it thing on nike or whatever homie that's just honestly exactly what it is you guys should just just freaking do it and you'll see this much much like you'll, you'll find yourself in a nice little motive to do things and then you find yourself to like sort of put yourself in this like routine and then once you get in a routine it's pretty much whatever you want to do from there so hope you guys enjoyed today's video hope you guys enjoy your year hope you guys enjoyed your year basically and hope you guys enjoyed 2018 i know i rambled out a lot i'm a little tired you can probably tell but uh i'm gonna just dip out much love guys see you guys on what next week or not but also oh dude i shouldn't say it, actually I'm, gonna, I'm just I'm not gonna say it but much love talk to you guys later Cecil hq out don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and uh stay freaking productive guys later that's it that's the tutorial